This is the first in a series of lessons about programming with C Sharp. It's a beginner's course, so I'm assuming that you have little if any experience with this particular programming language. In this lesson, we'll start by writing a simple Windows Forms application to display a few messages on the screen. I've already installed Visual Studio 2022 Community Edition. You'll need to do the same if you want to follow along. If you haven't already done so, you can download Visual Studio for free from the Microsoft Visual Studio website. If you're unfamiliar with this particular integrated development environment, that's OK. I'll be pointing out most of the features you'll need as you learn C Sharp. In this lesson, I'll also be pointing out some of the pitfalls that you might come across and how to deal with them. And I'll be suggesting some exercises that you can try for yourself as you progress. So let's begin. I've already launched Visual Studio and now I'm going to create a project of type Windows Forms app .NET Framework. If you've installed multiple languages, make sure you choose C Sharp. And make sure that you use this particular project template .NET Framework. It will include all the features that we're going to use. Give your project a name and be mindful of the project location. This is where various project files will be saved. I'll talk more about these files later. You can change the location if you want to by clicking on the button with three dots on it. I've already created a folder on my D drive called Visual Studio 2022 Projects and I've used it before, so this location is already selected for me. Now click Create. I just saw a message inviting me to install an update for Visual Studio. I will do that later on. I think it's a good idea to be using the most recent version. So here's my Windows form. On the right hand side I can see a couple of windows. I have my Solution Explorer, I'll be saying more about that later, and I have a Properties window. I'll be making use of that as well. On the left hand side I have a toolbox. By default these windows will slide in and out of view as and when you need them. There's a little drawing pin here which if I click it you can see the toolbox has disappeared. I can bring it back here. I like to pin the toolbox in place so that it's there all the time. The same goes for these windows on the right hand side. You can see little drawing pins there as well. I'm going to place a button onto the form. I'll find this under common controls. There's my button and I'm simply going to draw it onto the form. Notice that the button is selected, there are little drag handles around it, so I can resize it, or indeed I can move it to a new position. Now because the button is selected, I can see the button's properties over here in the properties window. And there's lots of things I can change if I want to. For now, all I want to do is change the name of the button. It's currently called button1. I'm changing it to BTN Go. BTN is just a naming convention. BTN because it's a button. And I'm going to change the text property of the button as well. You can see the text property has actually changed the appearance of the button. Now, most importantly, I want to write a program that will run when the button is clicked. To write the program, I can double click this button. When you first see this, it can be quite daunting. There's a lot of information here. But don't worry, I'll explain the different sections of code you can see here, and we'll make use of them as we progress. Suffice to say for now, my cursor is flashing where I need to type some code. Down here. Let's try this first, and then I'll talk about what all the curly brackets and semicolons mean. To display a message on the screen, I'm going to use the show method of the message box object. Don't worry too much about the terminology. I will be using the correct terminology as we go along, just to get used to it. But suffice to say for now, I'm going to type a command to display a message on the screen. 
As I start typing, a drop-down list has appeared, and I can see the command I want to use, message box. I can use my arrow keys to move up and down the items in the list, and then I can select an item by pressing my tab key. It's well worth getting used to this method of selecting items from the list, and you'll find you can do it very quickly eventually. Now I'm going to type a dot, and I have another list, and I can see the word show. I'll open a bracket, and I'm going to type my message in double quotes. You can see some help has appeared, telling me that I need to input a string. Welcome aboard the good ship C Sharp. Try saying that quickly. I can see a red squiggle at the end of the line. That's telling me that there's a syntax error here. I still need to type a semicolon to indicate the end of the line. Press enter and my cursor is positioned for the next command. Let's put in another one. My program consists of three instructions. A message to say, welcome aboard. Another message, C-sharp is a C-like object-oriented language. In fact, originally, Microsoft wanted to call it cool. C-sharp is widely used in game development, web development, and much more. To launch your application, click on the Start button, up here. And there's my form on the screen. Clicking on the button will run the program. And you can see I have a sequence of messages. I can stop the application either by just closing the form or by clicking on this red stop button. OK, now's a good time to talk about all of this information on the screen. The first thing I want you to notice is the curly brackets. You can see there's an opening curly bracket here and there's a closing curly bracket there. They go together. My program is in between the two. There's my code. Strictly speaking, my program is known as a sub-procedure. You'll see soon that I can have lots of sub-procedures within my application. It's also known as a method. It's a method of the form class. The name of the program is button go underscore click. Now it's important that I don't change this because the name of the program is what links it to the click event of the button. Change this name and the program won't run when I click on the button. Watch. In fact, I can't even start the form. There were build errors. When you first run a program, Visual Studio will compile it. It'll turn it into machine code that your computer can understand and execute. Visual Studio refers to this compilation process as building, and you can see the build has failed. It's inviting me to run the previous version of the program, which actually worked, but I really want to find out what's wrong with this version, so I'm going to click No. And I can see here, Form 1 does not contain a definition for btn go underscore click. To put it simply, I need to undo the change I'd made. And the program's working again. There's another pair of curly brackets here. That's the opening curly bracket, and lined up with it is the closing curly bracket. My code is contained within the form, or to be more precise, it's contained within the form class. In fact, the form class can be split across multiple separate files, which is why I have this. The class itself is contained within something called a namespace, a namespace called simple output. That's the name I gave to the project. And notice there's an opening curly bracket and a closing curly bracket. They always come in pairs. What does that mean for us? Well, until you understand a bit more about forms and namespaces, just leave them alone. There's also several using statements at the top. Suffice to say, these are making various commands available to me. And again, I'm not going to worry about these right now. Just leave them alone for now. I'm going to put another button on the form 
and write another program. I can switch back to the form then by clicking between these tabs. It's good practice to give the button a meaningful name and to change the text. Remember, if I want to write some code for this button, I can double click it. And can you see what's happened? I have another section within the form class at the same level as my original program. So there's my original program, and this is where I'm going to start writing my new program. Let's give it a try. Now there's something very important I need to point out here. C sharp is case sensitive. For example, if I type message box dot show and I've used a small s instead of a capital S, you can see a red wavy line here. Message box does not contain the definition for show. It doesn't recognize show with a small s. There's another problem, a red wavy line. We call this a syntax error. The name message box does not exist in the current context. It doesn't recognize this command. A syntax error is when you break the rules of the language. If I miss a double quote out, there's my red wavy line. Some of these messages can seem a little bit obscure, but I know there's a problem on this line. Double quotes always come in pairs, and you can see it's actually caused a problem on the next line as well. Why the semicolons? Well, the semicolons indicate the end of one command and the beginning of the next. Watch what happens when I do this. That doesn't seem to be a problem. My programs are still running. The fact is, I could write the entire program on one line, as long as those semicolons are in the right place. The reason I've done it like this is because it's much easier for me to read. But where I put the line breaks, where I've pressed the enter key, is irrelevant. The semicolons are what the C-sharp compiler is looking for to decide where one command ends and the next one begins. The same goes for these curly brackets. Again, you can see I've made a complete mess of the layout. But my programs are running absolutely fine. The curly brackets indicate the beginning and the end of a block of code. The layout and the indentation is just to make it easier for the programmer to see what's going on. You might have noticed we have something here. It says one reference, and again here, three references. Until you have a bit more experience, I suggest you just leave those alone. But you might inadvertently double-click one of these and inadvertently select this, and you find yourself looking at something rather daunting. Don't worry about it. This is some of the hidden code which allows the form to work. We don't need to concern ourselves with this at all, and there's no need to change it until you have a lot more experience. Notice it's opened up a new tab at the top here. I can just close that tab. Again, three references here. A lot of code which you will understand better with experience. For now, just close that tab. You can also collapse and expand sections of this code. For example, all of these using statements, there's a minus sign there. If I just click on it, I've collapsed that section and I can expand it out again by clicking on the plus sign. So give this a go yourself. See if you can display a series of messages on the screen like I've done. And don't be afraid to break anything. The worst thing that can happen is that you delete something you shouldn't have and you have to start again. In the next lesson, I'll talk about collecting input from the user of your application.